Hey guys, I hope you all are doing well. This is a crazy way to end the school year. In this video, I'll be giving you a quick rundown of my experiences from choosing and applying to colleges. So first up is standardized testing. I took both the SAT and the ACT. I took the SAT twice, once in March and again in May. I took the March test cold, which I honestly can't say I recommend after my score. I took the Shepherd's SAT prep class with Ms. Coderre in April, and my score went up by 120 points to something I was way happier with. So using a prep book and timing yourself is something that I definitely do to prepare. Prep with prep books definitely makes a difference, and I'd say the most important part is getting used to working with a timer. In my opinion, scores were super important to me because of scholarships. I'm going to UMaine in the fall, and their merit scholarships are heavily reliant on SAT scores, so it's definitely not an exam to take lightly. On the flip side of that, other schools don't care as much, so it's really just about the colleges you're looking into. So for building your college list, I use the Big Future College Search program online as my initial resource. And as I got more picky about colleges, it really helped to narrow down my search by size, location, and major. To figure out my choice of school, I also asked around and talked to a bunch of alumni of the schools and the programs that I was interested in to get a general consensus of what the school is like and their overall satisfaction with it, which helped a lot in my final decision. Making a pros and cons list is great when you're figuring out where to apply to. I made a big spreadsheet on my laptop with a bunch of colleges that I toured with three columns for pros, cons, and overall impression. The things you put on your list can be whatever you feel strongly about, and nothing is too unimportant to put on there. I spent a lot of time on niche.com looking at student reviews and putting those on my pros and cons list. Also, try to see some student life. Try to get the feel of life on campus, see if it fits with your personality. Honestly, college tours can be as short or as long as you want. I went to RPI twice and UMaine multiple times once I had decided on applying to those two schools. There were two schools I remember touring that I'm not going to name that had campuses I hated so much that I literally turned around in the parking lot and left, like didn't even park my car. Tours were really important to me, so I definitely recommend a virtual one if you can't get there in person. A lot of colleges have interactive virtual tours on their website, which are really cool and worth a look. If you can ask questions, do your research first and ask questions that haven't been answered by a look around on their website. Here's a brief overview of some of the colleges that I've toured. The first college I toured was RPI. It has a beautiful campus and a hill that overlooks the city, and a strong engineering and STEM programs. There's lots of co-ops, such as the Summer Arch program, where you go away from campus for the summer. Campus feels safe, and the surrounding city of Troy feels kind of like Portland. They're highly focused on academic achievement during tours, but didn't seem to have as big of a campus life that I saw. The next school I toured was WPI. It was a really great tech school, and the campus is very self-contained while still being able to see the city around you. There's lots of colleges nearby, so it's more of a college town, and there's lots of stuff to do outside of studying. And the people there felt really friendly and engaging. The next school I toured was Fairfield University in Connecticut. It felt like a lot bigger version of Shepherds, and their mascot's also a stag. It's a Jesuit school as well, and they have lots of green space and sidewalks. It was a really pretty campus. It's in a suburban area of Fairfield, and some of their engineering programs are fairly recent. And last, I toured University of Maine, which is where I'm going in the fall. They have a huge campus with lots of green space and trails, and it's in a secluded area. They have a very strong engineering program and a lot of clubs and extracurriculars to meet people because it's a really big school. They're very generous and upfront with merit money. They lay it right out on their website how much you're going to get for various SAT scores. And the in-state tuition is also nice, too. And here's Brendan with his insight on some Catholic colleges. My name is Brendan Fidrizi. I'm a senior at Chevrolet, class of 2020, and I'm going to St. Anselm College and studying politics next year. What colleges did you tour? I toured Assumption. I toured Catholic University. I toured Providence College. I toured Christendom College, and I toured St. Anselm College. So all the five that I applied to, I toured. Can you tell me a little bit about what you thought about Assumption College? The campus was nice. Um, they have a lot of good opportunities on campus. A lot. They have a decent music program, it seemed. Um, there's a lot of 
there's a lot of opportunities for scholarship for music or for community service. And uh, it's, it's in Worcester, but it's in a nice part of Worcester, which actually does exist. And um, the chapel was a bit of an eyesore though. So just, that was kind of a con of their campus. Chapel was an eyesore and a half. What about Catholic University of America? A very solid Catholic college. Um, it's a beautiful campus. It's, it's pretty green for Washington, DC, but um, it is still Washington, DC. I'm not a very big city person. So I was a little bit claustrophobic even on a campus, which they call is spread out. So that's kind of one drawback to the campus was that for me, at least it seemed very close together and it wasn't spread out. And um, it was just too much of a city college for me. You're right next to the Basilica of the National Shrine and the Immaculate Conception, which is a big, um, a big attraction to that campus. So there's a lot of nice things. They have a very good student life, it seems, and uh, academically and uh, theologically, they seem very sound. And what about Christendom? Very, very sound theologically. It's it's in uh, Front Royal, Virginia, so it's fair. It's kind of out there. It's very rural campus, which is very nice. Uh, beautiful view of the Shenandoah River. And there were the thing that I didn't like about the college was it's very small student body. It's only about 400, 500 kids in this whole student body. So that was kind of one drawback. And the other drawback is there wasn't a lot of opportunities for um, research or hands-on ex- internships through the college, which I have at which other college offered. Uh, what I did like about it, uh, theologically, it's probably the most Catholic college in the United States. It's very, um, it focuses very well on community aspect. The whole student body is able to eat lunch together and they stop at the, around 11.30 for mass and then everybody goes to lunch for mass basically. So it's, it's a very nice college for those who want to grow in their faith and want to do something with their faith in the world. And what did you think about Providence? Uh, again, it was a pretty nice campus. It was a little, it wasn't really my feel. Um, it's more liberal than middle of the road. And I was kind of looking for a more middle of the road so I could have an exchange of ideas. But there was a lot of, um, there was just some things that I didn't think were very Catholic done on that campus, which I was uh, kind of shocked shocked by uh, for a college run by Dominicans. Um, it, was a, it wasn't a bad campus. Uh, they also are very, they don't give a lot of money. That was my big thing from Providence is I, didn't, I got a lot of merit money for all other colleges, everybody, everywhere else I applied, but I didn't get any merit money from Providence. And what about St. Anselm? It's a more middle of the road uh, college as far as politics go, especially among the student body. It's very involved politically. They host the primary debates on campus every election cycle. I'm going for political science, so a huge draw for me was the New Hampshire Institute of Politics, and that's that's why I'm, I'm going there is because of um, how strong their political science program is. Um, it's pretty Catholic. The chapel's a little wonky, but it wasn't as bad as Assumption, and they have a very nice, a very solid community feel in the college. Um, it's also closer to home, like as opposed to going down to Catholic University or going down to Christendom, I can find the aspects I like of those two colleges at St. Anselm and still be home, close to home where I can go home on the week, on a weekend that I want to go home and see family on. It's not that much of a hassle to go home for Thanksgiving or any, or something like that. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. No problem. So next up is applying to colleges. I applied to two colleges. I definitely had more than enough options, so I was lucky to have the chance to be picky in the colleges that I applied to. In the fall when we were applying, I was interested in both, but by the time winter and spring rolled around, I was really only interested in one and set on my first choice by then. I'm glad that I applied to both because in general, applying to a few that you're interested in is good because it keeps your options open. And then about college reps, the college rep for UMaine is super nice and friendly, so it was easy to talk to him early in the process, which made me a lot less nervous when I was applying for UMaine. I wouldn't put too much importance in a relationship with the college reps in general, but it is nice to have them if you're willing to talk with them a bit, because they are there to answer your questions. 
Next is dealing with parents. For me, it just boiled down to trying their trying to answer their questions nicely. I kept them in the loop by showing them my college lists and listening to their advice. And personally, I'd known that I wanted to attend UMaine since November, so I was accepted and admitted as soon as I could. Don't feel bad for ruling out schools for smaller reasons. Like that pros and cons list I mentioned earlier, if there's something that bothers you about the school, it will continue to bother you if you go there. For me, I applied to UMaine and RPI. Both have awesome engineering programs and beautiful campuses, and I would get a great engineering education at both schools with tons of opportunities. But eventually, some of the things that helped me rule out other schools just boiled down to campus preference. And for some general tips, don't pass over state or local schools just because they're so close to home. Early on, I was attracted to a lot of the big name schools and my parents were too. But after a lot of research and visiting them, the cost just didn't work out. We realized that UMaine was a much better fit for me personally. While many people love private schools that are more well-known or competitive, UMaine just happened to check more boxes for me and it's two hours away, which is a distance I'm much more comfortable with. Another thing I'd recommend is looking at a sample curriculum while choosing your school. One of the schools I looked into was going to make me take a lot of core classes for the first three years or so before I could dive into any heavier classes associated with my major. They wouldn't let me take like heavier engineering classes until my junior year. I, while I see the merit in this, I wanted to start taking relevant classes earlier, so I ruled that school out. Also, if you have any specific clubs you know that you'll be interested in, it's okay to rule out a school if they don't have that. You won't be studying all the time, and you're going to need fun stuff and hobbies to get involved in, to make friends, and to get to know people outside of your classes. Schools with, with an advertised 3 plus 2 or 3 plus 1 program sound cool because the extra year is often at a really nice school, but from my experience, it means they don't have the resources to teach your major on their campus. My take is if they'll have to send you to a different college to get your degree anyway, why not just go to the second college and save the hassle of going back and forth between schools? And this next point is a super important one. Don't be afraid to reach out and email people, especially admissions offices and program directors for your major. Once I narrowed down to a couple schools, I would email people in the departments and programs rather than the admissions office because I wanted specific details about the program instead of a generic overview. They're super eager to help and really friendly in my experience, especially if you have questions about certain academic programs and opportunities. One last thing to remember, the college you picked does not define you and a certain school will not make or break your future. You can always change your major or transfer colleges if something doesn't work out. It's only four years of your journey and you've got your whole life ahead of you. So that's all I've got. Thank you for watching and good luck with the college search process.